Or last week, I kind of made a joke. It was New Year, and I said, New You. New Year, New You. And, and I said, that's not a biblical statement. If you're a Christian, the idea that you have a new year and you get a new you is not actually something that we find in the Bible. Because in Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians 15, we read this. We read something else. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. The Bible talks about how we have, our heart has been taken from a heart of stone and put into a heart of flesh, that we have this new heart, that we are no longer under the bondage of sin, but we are under grace and that we have life in Christ. So we don't need a new you. Jesus in, in John 10, he talks about that the life that he gives, it is called an abundant life. That's what he comes to give us. And as I was preparing this message, this is not where I was going with it, but God kind of just laid this on my heart on this idea of an abundant life. And the question that God asked me and that I want to ask you is, is if somebody that you know, somebody that loves you, that's not a Christian, somebody that cares about you, that has heard you talk about Jesus, has heard you talk about this Lord and Savior and this relationship that you have with him, if somebody that you know was to ask you to describe what is it like to live like life like a Christian? What is it to live like a Christian? The question that, that God brought to me was, would I be able to answer that it's an abundant life? Would I be able to say that this idea of abundance, that my life is overflowing, that it's beyond measure, the idea that I have joy unexplainable? Would I be able to say that I have Peace, indescribable. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Now, I'm not talking about the happy butterflies. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about in the valley or on the mountaintop that I have peace. Amen? Because that's what we're called to. In John 10, verses 9 and 10, this is what Jesus says. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I want to center in on that word pasture because we're going to kind of talk about that. What is a pasture? It's where sheep go and graze. It's where they get their nourishment, right? That's what a pasture is. And so, so he says that you will find pasture. Then it says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they, talking about his sheep, they, that's us, his sheep may have life and have it abundantly. And so the question is, is, is if, if I am one of Jesus' sheep and I cannot describe my life as abundant, why not? Remember, this is a heart check series. This is a series where we're supposed to look in at our life and go, what is our priorities? And if I'm honest, sometimes I can't do that. Does anybody else feel that way? Sometimes you can't, if someone was to ask you at the wrong day, at the wrong time, you wouldn't be able to describe your life as abundant, right? You're not alone, depending on the season you're in. Sometimes your worry is about these other things, kids, money, health. But I propose today that the, that the problem is in that verse. See, I propose that the problem is that maybe that some of us can't describe our life as abundant because we've let the thief come in. Amen. We've let the thief come in and kill and steal and destroy the life that we experience in Christ. I'm not talking about salvation. We are saved by grace through faith, amen? amen. I'm talking about Jesus says he came that we would have an abundant life, an overflowing life. See, I allow the enemy to come in sometimes. I allow the enemy to come in and, and I believe the lies and, and I let him um, be focused on the things of this world. I start to worry about my health or my kid's health or someone I love's health. I start to worry about finances. I start to worry about the things of this world. And we talked about it a little bit last week that, that when the things of this world become our priorities, it's like the parable of the seed that the seed get drops in thorny ground and that the life gets choked out of it. Amen? And then what happens, we become unfruitful. Anybody feel miserable when you're in that state? (laughs) 
It's, it's terrible, right? <laughs> I'm not like trying to beat, beat you down because you have that feeling. Like, no, no, everybody does and it sucks. It's terrible, right? Like, it feels miserable. Like you're, you know, the, the illustration of like you're treading water and your head is just above and you're trying to breathe and it's almost like you're choked out. That is not the life that Jesus came for us to have. Amen? Not only is it miserable, but also, see, like I said, it makes us unfruitful. Because as Christians, we have a mission to do. We have a great commission, right? To proclaim the gospel, to be the example of Jesus to the world. But when I let the enemy get a hold of me, and I step out of that abundant life because I'm worried about this world, I can't do what God is calling me to do. See, Jesus didn't give us an abundant life. We want to think like, and there's prosperity preachers out there that are absolutely unbiblical and false teachers that teach that, that your life, you get your best life now. Anybody feel like sometimes they got their best life now all the time? Ah, but you do. Amen. See, don't let the enemy lie to you because we have life in Christ. There is nothing better than that. Amen. There is nothing better than that. There is nothing in this world that can fulfill you. See, the, the, the abundant life is an overflowing life of joy and peace and patience and goodness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control, right? And then those things flow out of us. I used to have a pastor friend that would say, we are called to be leaky vessels, right? We're like a, a vase with holes in it, and this joy and peace flows out of us. But if what we're filled with is worry and doubt and fear and anger and frustration, what's flowing out, right? So the question is, is, can you describe your life as abundant? And if not, my follow-up question is, we're talking about pastures, where are you grazing? What pasture are you grazing in? See, the abundant life is found in a relationship with God where we have no want. 